anybody who studied biochemistry knows very well how central phosphorus is in our metabolism. It is the main tool our cells use to turn on or turn off enzymes by phosphorylating or dephosphorylating them. It is our main energetic currency as part of ATP. It is a necessary building block of our DNA and it is a component of phospholipids that are used to build the membranes of all of our cells. It is of course also an electrolyte that is needed to maintain electrochemical gradients and acid-base balance, and together with calcium it forms the hydroxyapatite crystals that strengthen our bones and teeth. Indeed, 85% of the body's phosphorus is found in our skeleton. Undoubtedly, phosphorus is a very important essential mineral without which life would not be possible. In our Western diets, however, the problem with phosphorus is almost always a problem of excess, mainly because absorption is relatively high, around 70%, and because phosphorus is widely available in both animal and plant food. Milk and dairy products, nuts and seeds, meat and fish, and whole grains are all rich sources of phosphorus. On top of that, Many fertilizers used in agriculture contain phosphorus, which is eagerly uptaken by fruits and vegetables. But there's more. Phosphoric acids and polyphosphates are widely used as food additives with many different functions such as antioxidants, flavor enhancers, thickeners, and moisture keepers. They are used in many cheeses, baked goods, meat products, especially cured meats and cold cuts, and to stabilize flavor in many soft drinks, especially cola beverages. As a result of all this, it is not uncommon to get two or three times as much phosphorus than we need. To make things worse, our calcium intake is on average slightly below the RDA, while ideally our phosphorus intake should be matched by calcium in a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning one gram of calcium for every gram of phosphorus. Unfortunately, our average phosphorus intake is more than three times the one of calcium. And this is a problem for a variety of reasons. First of all, phosphorus interferes with calcium absorption. Then it has an acidifying effect which may lead to increased calcium utilization as a buffer and its subsequent excretion. But above all, high phosphorus levels induce secretion of parathyroid hormone to maintain homeostasis because this hormone will induce urinary excretion of excess phosphorus. But as we already know, parathyroid hormone does many other things. For example, it transfers calcium from our bones to our bloodstream. Thus, chronically elevated levels of phosphorus not matched by an adequate calcium intake will result in decreased calcium absorption, increased calcium excretion, and bone calcium depletion. What we can do to avoid this is balance phosphorus-rich foods with adequate calcium and keep an eye on extra sources of phosphorus, especially in the form of food additives. Magnesium is another major mineral that works together with calcium as phosphorus in strengthening the structure of our bones, but it does a lot more than that. Together with calcium, magnesium is needed for nerve transmission, heartbeat regulation, and muscle functioning. It is needed by more than 300 enzymes, many of which are involved in energy metabolism, meaning the metabolic pathways to extract energy from the nutrients. About half of our magnesium is located in our bones, 1% circulates in the bloodstream, and the remaining magnesium is inside our cells, especially muscles, heart, and liver. We need approximately half as much magnesium as calcium. Although overt deficiencies are rare, Magnesium intake is often suboptimal. This may lead to high blood pressure, heart arrhythmias, general weakness, and increased risk for osteoporosis, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. It has been observed that in areas where drinking water is rich in magnesium, there is a lower incidence of sudden death from heart failure, possibly because inadequate magnesium supply makes it easier to stop coronary artery spasms once they start. Better have some magnesium around, don't you think? Plant products are our best sources of magnesium. Nuts and seeds, many vegetables, whole grains, and some fruits. To a lesser extent, animal food also contributes to our magnesium requirements. 
sea snails are an exceptionally rich source of magnesium. Finally, some hard waters can be rich in magnesium as well.